I have a riddle for you. When is a 1024 nut not a 1024 nut? When you recap it to be a 1032 nut. I'm not sure how effective the nylon locking is going to be anymore, but uh, hey, uh, this is getting done tonight. Good thing these are just steel nuts and not stainless nuts. They were out of stainless nuts, so I had to buy plain steel nuts. This is truly going to be a unique, one-of-a-kind machine when I'm done. Even the nuts are custom. Oh, yeah, I think the nylon shot on them, now I can spin them on with my finger. That's great. All right. Oh, and she's got some heft to her now. But those transformers, they're mounted. Yes. All right. Let us actually now get to the fun part. I get to wire this up now. Let's see how I'm going to get this oddball transformer to work. There is entirely too much hardware everywhere here. I should start putting some of this away because I don't need it all anymore. I don't even use 1024. I like my threads fine. All right, where do we start here? In the power section, right over here, we have several situations going on. Now, here's the wiring for this. We have this voltage doubler, which requires two capacitors in series. And it just so happens the Jet City, the main power capacitor set is two capacitors in series, which means it's gonna be really easy to adapt this and turn this into a voltage doubler circuit. We simply have to remove these two resistors and then connect a negative to the center here where the connectors, uh, resistors intersected. And then, you know, we have to get creative with the diode arrangement. So let's get the resistors out. Just gonna need to um, coax them out with a dab of fresh solder. These resistors are for balancing an otherwise standard circuit, so we don't really need it for this application. And that's great because it gives us a hole to connect to. So off the standby switch, we have these two leads, S1 and S2. So we have to reconfigure these diodes. Now it's gonna be a simple case of, you know, one of these goes up into the capacitor set. The other one goes to the intake here. So basically we're gonna take one of these brown wires and connect it to the center. I don't know, because this is a low voltage, I don't think I need four of these anymore. I can uh, remove two of them to clean up the wiring a bit. Let's double check. Yeah, we're gonna have to get one of these to jump over to ground. So either way, both of these brown connectors here come out. I'm just gonna do a little mapski mapski so I know what's going where. And those, yeah, those combined together. That's the positive side. That's the negative side. So that right there is directly connected to negative. So we can use that as a jump point. So one of these brown wires is definitely gonna connect to the center here. And that goes between the two capacitors. That's gonna connect to the uh, standby switch eventually. I just have to decide now. Those combine together. Those, I'll pull this one. Give me some of my nice new high voltage 22 gauge wire. There, there. All right, pretty sure I got it here and it's really this simple. So we got the two lines coming in from the standby switch. I'm gonna connect the high voltage secondaries to the top. One of them goes to the in-between of the capacitors as dictated right here. The other goes in between the two diodes. I made this like staple jumper here, jumping them together. This one goes down here. That's gonna be your negative. It goes to the negative side of the capacitor set, just jumpered here. This nice uh, piece of wire, 105C 600 volt rated. And then up there, that's gonna go to the top side. It should be that easy. Now it's just a case of getting those high voltage secondaries connected up to the switch which needs like a lot of work. That switch is, it's gotten filthy. I just splattered solder all over this connector here. Now I'm uh, intentionally leaving some of these leads long because I'm not, you know, 100% on committing to this mod yet. You never know, there could be problems. Oh, like the solder doesn't want to stick to these wires nice. Well, it's connected now. Over here, we have our 6.3 volts and that's very obviously wired. This wire doesn't look like it wants to fuse with the new solder. I'm not liking the look of some of these connections. And these yellow lines, well, that's our spare low voltage. That's gonna go to run the relay. 
Now, blue bias. It's lower voltage than some typical bias connections. I'm worried that it might not have enough negative voltage to bias certain tubes. So we're kind of crossing our fingers here. Well, let's get her in there. Bias. And the other half of the bias, it just kind of grounds out, right? It's going to go to one of these ground lugs. Not the one next to it. We need that one. On that next one, we might as well just attach this main ground lug. What else is going to the ground? Not this yellow. I think that's it. Just this white from the DC supply. Jeez, this is going way faster than mounting the darn things. Got to get the choke hooked back up. Black choke wire goes nowhere, does nothing. And that's pretty much the power supply connected other than the mains. Oh, our center top for the six volt. Darn it. Crisis averted. Got a nice little tapestry we're forming here. Okay, so we have to look at his specifications. Oh, where are they? Schematic for the primaries. It's your typical black with black yellow. So black with black yellow. And then black pink or black red with red green. We gotta get those connected to these mains wires here. These mains wires that have been semi butchered. We'll just go ahead and fix on these. All right, so what are we gonna do here? Are we gonna make our black and black yellow our hot? I guess, because there's black. That one has black and red and green. Whatever, the one with the more blacks will be our hot. Oh, it'll go together nicely, I think. We just need some uh, heat shrink that's gonna go over top of it before we solder. That should do. And we'll do the same thing on the other line, except with the neutral. So the transformer is ready for power now. But what's not ready is this stupid mains line that, you know, it got butchered. He decided that was the great place to uh, tap into the freaking power. Now, how am I going to get shrink wrap on that? You don't. Unless we cut and resplace this wire. Yeah, there isn't really a way for me to get heat shrink onto there. So I just got to improvise with some of the rubberized electrical tape to make that real just like that. Sticks pretty well to itself. Just in case, I gotta reinforce it with a piece of hockey tape so it can't unpeel. All right, we're ready for some power. So this guy is gonna connect to here, post fuse here. Now we're going to bundle up this general wired area. And these guys too. That's a humble bundle. All right, plug in these mains wires. Now, are we ready to attach some main voltage and double check some voltages before we uh, connect on the rest of this, sir? Sure, I do not see why not. We don't have any tubes installed. Maybe we get a big explosion, you know? Maybe we pop a fuse. No, we got a red light. We got a nice peaceful hum. All right, let's pull some ground. Let's pull some voltages, sir, okay. What do we have here? So, um, right here on the OT connection should be our final voltage. Nothing. Oh boy. Standby's not on. <laughs> okay. Oh, 488 volts. Okay. That works. That works, sir. Uh, where's our bias supply? It's at the other side of... Where is that little burp, 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 burp? Where is that little burp, 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 burp? All the way over here? Negative seven? We're only seeing negative 37 volts. This, this could be a problem. We might not have enough bias supply. We could probably hack a few more uh, via the yellow secondary and get six volts more out of it. All right, Jet City, bias voltage R11 right here. Negative 37, negative 47. We get 10 volt drop across R11, 15K. We might have to drop that value. This 10K transfers it over. No, that's not that 10K. R18, is there bleed to ground across that bias adjustment? Oh, I don't think that's gonna be enough bias voltage, bud. 50 volts. Yeah, here in the annotated uh, Soldano schematic, it's calling for 50 volts AC. So that, that's a kink we're gonna have to work out, right? Now let's uh, watch this voltage drop. Need to let the capacitors ventilate themselves before I go sticking my fingies in there, right? Oh, this is taking forever.
Now, indeed, the 30 some volts, the bias voltage that we have uh, via that underpowered coil is more indicative of what we would want in, you know, a lower voltage, big power triode that this transformer is probably designed for. So we can try it once we get everything else hooked up, but ugh, not, not thinking, not, not thinking that's going to be good. We need to ventilate the rest of this power though. Just got to take this random 120k resistor, connect between some ground point and some B plus point right here. That voltage should start dropping rapidly. Yep, it'll be discharged in no time. In the meantime, let's get hooking on these uh, output transformer secondaries. That's over here. So we just got a mess of wires. Uh, <laughs> uh, black is ground. We gotta connect that somewhere, don't we? Where did the output transformer ground originally connect? Oh, onto the jack I removed. That's where. Well, let's just go ahead and get this other jack connected. This mysterious, magical DI output that we may or may not actually ever use. So all the schematic implies orange is two, and that would be our positive. That would be our tip, which makes white ring. We have a ground lead that we might as well connect. Um, that's not gonna be fun. And maybe we can use that as a binding post for the output transformer ground. All right, let's just secure that down. Better make sure we label these appropriately. Okay, so do we remember the pinout of this guy? 1750D data sheet. Green yellow is four ohms. So that's gonna now be our eight ohms. 16 yellow is inadmissible in the court of lull. We don't have a jack for it. <laughs> green and green yellow of all the color codes. They use the same one twice. Actually, we can use the 16 ohm tap, or wait, no, these amps tap off the 4 ohm. They, they take feedback off the 4 ohm. Same with the Jet City. Do we want it? I found it on the 8. I'm trying to remember what difference that makes again. Ah, the Bobo thing tells me. Negative feedback. More. Less gain, smoother, tighter, lower, all value, high tap position. Less. More gain, hairier, brighter, looser, higher R value, low tap position. 16 ohm tap, the most and least aggressive sounding. Okay, I guess we'll stick with eight ohms for now. Otherwise, yeah, we could use the 16 ohm wire as a dedicated feedback. Wow, this is um, not the kind of wire you normally use for this. All right, we have our eight ohm and we feedback. And our eight ohm top is gonna be the 16 ohm. Now we're just gonna cap off the uh, extra right here and like try to bundle them up. All right, now we just have to hook up these primaries and we're done. Pretty much, I think, unless our bias doesn't behave. Now, the polarity of these guys is reversed. So, over here, we see where the output transformers connect. And I have it labeled brown and blue. But the polarity on this transformer is reversed compared to standard polarity. Brown is top, whatever. I know it's backwards, so we'll just put it in backwards. Put the brown in the blue hole and the blue in the brown hole. And this red line has to go all the way to the front, to the OT position, right here. All right, for all intents and purposes, this thing is connected and ready to go. We just need to give it some tubes, give it some power, make sure it has enough negative voltage to bias properly. Definitely, definitely put on some weight. All right, 6CA7's going in. E83CC, E83S is in our front. Electroharmonic 7025s is in our buffer and phase inverter. ECC83S, E83CCs, Electroharmonic 7025s. Now the question is, if I flip this over, am I gonna clear power tubes? I don't think so. This transformer's not tall enough. This one is. Shim shiminy shim. Just stacking up a little two by four, understand, I think you know it. There we go. All right. Let's give it some cab in the, um, which, which one's which now? Oh, oh, we need to relabel this. Uh, alcohol doesn't really take that off. Here we go. That's going to be eight. That's going to be 16. And this is going to be DI out. So eight, where is our bias meter? Let's get that on. Main power, voltage meter, power. Oh, okay, what do we got for B plus now, bud? 480, that's good. So on our anodes, where are they? 472, oh, we're at 45 volts already. Uh-oh, ooh, that's what I was afraid of. Bias is turned all the way down and we're at 57 volts, bud. 57 volts. That's not gonna do, hmm. 
Mind you, I do have another set of tubes that um, won't buy us normally. That might be worth a try. They're these vintage 8417s and they're a 35 watt power. Is it beam power or are they a pentode? I think they're beams. Either way, these tubes are either really weak or they don't need very much bias. I could not get them to bias up. They would run like literally no power at all. I know they work. But now with this neutered bias circuit, <laughs> before we go fixing on it, let's uh, let's see what these will do. Let's see if these will bias up. We don't even know if this is going to sound any good. Ooh, three. Yeah, see what I mean? They're really tame already. Oh my god, I'm going to get them to 45. I'm going to get to hear what these guys are like. Nice. All right. For the first time, full new transformer set. Oddball. Vintage. NOS. Power transformer. Don't electrocute me. Feel like it's got more low, like brr, 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 booming low. There's some uh, funny crispness in the high end. Like the voltage that's going to the, whatchamacallit, to the tubes is gonna be higher now, right? 350, uh, what do we have on V1? 235, 228, 301. 236. Do we have any idea what these voltages are supposed to be? Used to be a good schematic would have the voltages mentioned on the cathode of each tube. But now it's just, okay, B plus, it's parallel here. 350, 359, 350 to 359. Now let's look at the Jet City. So that's R40 and R44. There's an R40, 337, 353. R44, 353, 323. So our, our, our voltage is lower than what it would say it would be on the Soldano. Now on the Soldano, they're also starting off at 395 volts. I don't know that the Jet City was that high. It sounded great at 460, which makes me feel like I need more voltage drop on the preamp, not less. So if it starts at 497 on the B+, plus, we have 365 on the B+. Plus. Okay, under load, we're back where we were. We only get one volt drop across our choke. It's probably not much of a choke, but at any rate, we need to fix this bias supply, get proper tubes in there, and then see what happens. Uh, too bad. So sad. Pull that bias supply. You know what? 30 volts could be enough voltage to make, you know, certain solid state power supplies. Like if you're doing switching, some of those uh, solid state uh, switching and, and whatever the crap that they have in modern amplifiers, they run on 15 volts, 15 volts positive, 15 volts negative. You, that, that could probably be a good candidate. Alternately, if I needed more uh, voltage for my heaters and I wanted to use the other heater supply, well then I could probably adapt that 30 volt supply to run the switching on here. Just have to put in a larger value drive dropping resistor to calibrate it. The idea here that I'm going for now is I'm hoping I can figure out the phasing because uh, of this um, six volt circuit that's running the switching, one, of, one half of that is connected directly to ground. So what I'm hoping is if I uh, put those two in series, I can get switching circuit and a little bit of a boost of bias. So right now it says 67 volts, but that's a lie. We gotta get the phasing right. Two volts, that's not correct phasing. 41 volts, so 34. We've gained six volts of bias supply, so that's gonna work. 
We're just gonna daisy chain these two together. The switching circuit's not in the signal path. It shouldn't be affected. It should still get its six volts that it needs. So the switching should still work if we, um, yep. If you phase it the wrong way, it takes away six volts. If you phase it the correct way, it adds six volts. So you figured this out, because if you look at the Jet City schematic, half of the supply connects directly to ground. So we take the top of this, put it through the bias secondary, and then boom, we've added a few volts. Hacks. Okay, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna daisy chain our second six volt secondary and our bias supply together through to ground. How do we do that now? Okay, the black wire is connected to that hole. So the black wire is the one that doesn't have heat shrink on it. We gotta get that wire out of there. All right, can we get these into the same hole together? So we should be able to get both these wires through that one same hole and solder it in there. And get this bias lead back onto the bias port. All right, making progress now. R11 right there is a 15K dropper that's killing 10 volts. So 41 volts, it's gonna bring it down to 31 volts. Or, or is that how it worked? Well, let's, let's measure it. Okay, we got 41 volts here at the other side of R11. Boom, negative 44 volts. What's on the intake? 56, yeah, 56 after rectification, that's cool. 44 after that drop. We need to reduce that drop, assuming we can't bias our tubes anymore. Maybe, maybe we have enough voltage now. Well, let's find out. All right, right now it's at minimum. The lowest setting bias could possibly be. Still climbing. 20, it's settling at 20. Okay, so we can turn it up from there. Oh, I think we're gonna be okay now. I guess we'll leave that resistor in place until we've proven that we need more. All right, 6CA7s at 45, which is quite possibly not our corrected bias. Well, hold on. What is our B plus now? What, what, are, what are we getting on pin three? 460 volts. Yeah, that, that's about where we were before. That's good.
it turned up to six, which is as loud as it goes before the power section starts to distort. I feel like that transformer, that power transformer does have a little bit more jam. The roar had more interwave dynamic that w than it did with the old transformer. Hmm. Yeah, it's holding. Transformer's a little warm. It worked, but yeah, this quite possibly could be a 100 watt unit. I was seeing uh, stuff as high as, uh, what was that? 100, 100 milliamps? What voltage? I should have measured voltage to get a wattage reading here. Oh boy, oh boy. Hindsight's always 2020, right but Right but I'll probe one of these tubes. <laughs> okay, one, one last hurrah. I'm seeing 450 at 105. That's 47 watts out of one tube. Ho 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 Easily a hundred clean watts out of this amp now. Oh, yes <laughs> Ideas ideas ideas, but hey <laughs> I, th I think we're done for now. This has been a long day. It's almost midnight. I'm gonna not listen to loud anymore. I have like one or two little tweaks I wanna do to this guy while I'm in here, little voicing tweaks. I find the uh, over crunch channel a bit chirpy and I think it might have something to do with this uh, 2.2 meg 120p combination right here. I kinda wanna turn that down to a more conventional arrangement because the, um, the crunch channel on this is, it's, it's reminiscent of a JCM 800. So with a little bit of tweaking, I think I can get a slightly more favorable sound out of it. Yeah, but all right, I, ugh, ugh, loud, loud. Makes me tense. <laughs> but that's, that might be the best I've heard this amp sound. I hope you enjoyed this. I, I really did. New transformers, yeah! This amp is back up and running and now, I can start that Soldano clone build. Stay tuned for that. You are welcome. That makes no sense.